Welcome back everybody, SF Live episode number 74 already. I'm joined in a few seconds by Doug Ramshaw, President of Minera Alamos. We've talked to Doug six months ago, time flies. Uh, he was guest number two on SF Live. He was one of the first ones helping us try out this new format. Really appreciate it back then, still appreciate him coming on. Um, but before we get started, before I switch over to Doug, Please be reminded to use hashtag AskMAI for your questions during this live conversation. We will be live for about 15 or at least 20 minutes. We've got lots to talk about with Doug and catch up on. So at least 20 minutes live. Make sure you put them in there. We'll get to your questions at the end of the conversation. Also, very important, follow us here on Twitter. Make sure you turn on the bell and notification button. That way you get alerted when we go live with another video. Also, follow us on YouTube. Turn on the subscription button there. Make sure to comment. Give us a thumbs up as well. That helps us qualify the content and really focus in on what you guys like as well. Well, now that's it from my end. Let's switch over to Mr. Doug Ramshaw. Doug, how? Uh, wow! I forgot to set you up in here. We've been chatting too much. But uh, Doug, give me one second. Ah, that's when I do everything on the fly here. Ah, it's wondering where your face was. Give me one second, everybody. One second. Oh, and. He is here. Duck, my mistake. Sorry about that. That's fine. You were much better on episode two. Um, oh, no, episode two, <laughs> I had a square around my face with a camera always trying to focus on me. So I'm still working this out. I'm not a video technician. So apologies for that. But Duck, thanks for joining us again. Episode 74. Uh, how you been doing? I I'm good. Apparently, I use the same tailor. Um, <laughs> and uh, glad we're, uh, we're two different teams today, red team and blue team. Yeah, I'm great, Kai. Uh, uh, good to be back with you and your audience. We've, we've been chatting before. That's why I got carried away. I forgot to set this up. But there's so much we can talk about um, ever since we started. But I don't want to do too much of a recap because you've done a lot of interviews. You've chatted. You're very active on CEO.ca. There's a lot of stuff or information people can find there. Uh, one very useful source of information for me was also a Caesars Report interview you've done with our friend Thibaut Laputre there. Uh, I urge everybody to read up on that as well. I want to drill down on a couple points. Um, but... One, one, one thing that's important to me as well, we have probably a couple new viewers as well. Start with a 60 second introduction. I'd like to introduce that, like we're not going to talk about COVID or anything, but give us a 60 second introduction, Minera Alamos, and then we'll drill down on recent news. You just put out a press release seconds ago uh, as well, and we're going to get to that. So give us an update and we'll, we'll dive right in. Yeah, uh, Minera, uh, hopefully most people know, uh, is a gold mine developer, and we are on the cusp of throwing off that label, uh, which most developers would like to, uh, and become a new gold producer. Uh, Santana is under construction right now. We have a pipeline of two other projects behind it. And as I like to remind people, this is not our first rodeo. This is about the fourth. This will be the fourth mine that uh, the team have built down in uh, Mexico uh, in the last 12 years. So really looking forward to uh, to joining the uh, the ranks of gold producers for 2021 and what a perfect time with the gold market uh, uh, performing as it is. Exactly, you mentioned perfect timing for that. Um, I have a bit of a hard time structuring our conversation. You have three projects, you just closed the financing. Uh, maybe we start with the cap structure and the financing right there. Uh, give us some input. Uh, you closed a $15 million bot deal just minutes ago, officially. Um, the date was set for today anyway, So, but that, that's that been very, very positive. Uh, one thing that was positive for me seeing it, like you priced it at 63 cents, while the stock at one point was trading at 78 cents. Uh, I expected a bit more of a, a blowback on it and maybe more of a dip, but the, the stock held up really, really well. So give it, run us through your rationale of pricing at 63. We, we've talked about it, but more just of a as an update there. Tell us where yeah. the interest came from and uh, who, do, who took some of the shares. Yeah, we announced we announced a new Sierra Dora uh, project on August 4th. And, you know, there was a lot of interest in the banking community on the back of that news. Prior to that deal, I don't think I could have justified a raise. It, it certainly allowed me to, to consider financing. Um, like the three financings that preceded this one, we have been straight share financings. I think strong companies can command straight shares. I, I sacrificed a little discount, uh, extra discount to ensure no warrants on this deal. Um, when the financing was announced, uh, the stock was 73 cents. and. In many ways, the fact that the stock really traded between 70 and 73 cents pretty much the whole time during the last couple of weeks, even with increased volatility, that told me that we priced it right. 
Like it was good, there was a lot of demand for incoming shareholders and the kind of shareholders I wanted, which was largely institutional. Um, and at the same time, I didn't get blowback from shareholders because it had a very quick spike up to 78 cents. But the VWAP since announcing that transaction was 69 cents. So when you look at it that way, you know, it was about a 7% discount to the VWAP since the Sierra Dorara announcement. So I, I I was very happy with the market's reception and also the, the institutional uh, reception to to the company and the financing. Fantastic. It, do you see any new shareholders come in or is it a lot of the existing shareholders? I know you have a few institutions already placed, a lot of high net worth retailers in there. Uh, any, anybody new that stuck out or that you can mention? I know their institutions are a bit finicky about that, but... Yeah. I mean, you know, there were a number of, you know, larger institutional orders in the, you know, the two, two and a half million dollar range, which is, you know, gives them that, that initial toehold into the company. Um, I would say in, in total, you know, a little over 10 million was was institutional. I wanted to get a blend of welcoming new retail shareholders. And we got a lot of those who national bank uh, who, you know, were the underwriter of the deal and initiated recently. Um, and we, you know, certainly we had interest from existing shareholders that wanted to average up from positions they had last year. Um, so it was a really good blend. But yeah, we, we did want to increase the institutional ownership. And, and I'm delighted to welcome some of the, the names, you know, I've been speaking to for 18 months, and we finally converted them as Monera shareholders now. And I look forward to making them happy shareholders like Probably most of our register has been given the performance over the last year. I was going year. to say, when we last spoke, the stock was roughly 24 cents, 25 cents or something in that range. So you're up 275% since we last spoke here on SF Live. So we've obviously spoken in between, but uh, since then, it's fantastic. Um, what, one last thing, like doing the financing, positive side effects, you don't have to take on an additional royalty on Santana to further finance your activities. Is that correct? Yeah, when we did the construction finance package, we did provide ourselves with an optional facility to draw down some additional cash from a Cisco, but I hope this is not going through the stream. Doug, I'm just losing you here on Wi-Fi. I, uh, I just lost you on Wi-Fi here for a second here, it seems. Are you back? Am I back? Yes, you're back yeah. now. So let's just start again. Like you, you, The side effect of the, the financing was that you don't have to take on another... Four, I think it was a 4% royalty on Santana. Let, let's talk about that for a second. Well, the, 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 fine, the, the royalty package was a 3% royalty to a Cisco, and there was this optional 2% capped royalty to, to draw down another $3 million. And I always thought that that would probably be replaced by one facility or another, whether it be equity or and likely equity. Uh, now we don't have to draw that down. So I think it's fair to say the royalty burden on Santana will just be that 3%. Uh, and I'm, I, I'm probably disappointing as Cisco in that regard, but uh, it's better for our shareholders this way. Um, but I think also having this funding in place allows us to not just complete Santana and have sufficient working capital facilities for when mining commences there, but I can, I can realistically look now and say Santana can be built and thereafter we can build Sierra de Oro um, without potentially having to tap the markets again. And, and with that sequencing, which is one of the options we can consider right now having a third asset, you know, those two built first might avoid the debt of building Fortuna, which is still low capex. But, you know, so my goal, I think now is to, to figure out the plan. And, and I think that's a solid plan whereby, you know, we build the two heap leeches, which are low capex, and avoid needing to take debt on for building project number three. And there's there's really great value in achieving okay. that. Sorry to wrap up the financing aspect and the capital structure there. We just got a question via Twitter that I just saw come in that's quite fitting, and I don't want to save it to the end because it'd be out of context. But uh, did Doug or management board participate in the financing? And the question was posed by Oswaldo here on Twitter. Um, no, actually, we didn't. A number of management had expiring warrants 
uh, that expired in July. And as in the case of, say, Darren, uh, the CEO, he exercised all those warrants, didn't sell a single share to cover tax and everything else. He might he might have to come tax time. I don't know. But uh, quite often you see people exercise options and see them blow out all the stock. Uh, I've gone on record saying I have a little over four million shares. I want to get to five. It dawned on me a while back that I have 950,000, 12 and a half options, which expire, I think, sometime next year. So while I haven't been participating in the market, my good check to the company for 120 grand, exercise those options, not sell a single share uh, and get over 5 million shares. And I might add um, the $120,000 I would be giving to the company at that point is me basically paying my salary for a year. So um, uh, I think... Uh, you know, I will be quite happy if I can get to five million shares by effectively giving the company the, the, the money that they pay me in a in a given calendar year. Well, shareholders can't complain about that one. That's that's true. So um, let's dive into the projects a little bit. We've, we've yeah. summed up the cap structure now, the financing and all of that. That's all good. Um, just because of the way I laid out the question, let's just start with Santana. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's the near-term production asset. Uh, give us a quick production update. Like we, we briefly have to touch on COVID, uh, like COVID-related delays, obviously. And uh, one, one thing I'm really interested on is drilling. But let's start with the production. Where are you at right now? When do you start uh, producing concentrate? Yeah, we so we initially looked at a six to eight month construction period. And whilst stuff got delayed in Mexico when all mining had to shut down in the months of April and May, um, we did get certain stuff carried on uh, prior to that. So right now, at the beginning of September, we've been really active at site for the last three months. You know, our guidance right now is for construction to end around year end, which is really in line with that overall construction guidance of six to eight months. Uh, COVID, obviously, no one could anticipate. So. I would expect a, a, a minimum, minimal amount of pre-stripping that is required for part of the pit area. That should commence before year end and very early on in, in 2021, mining should commence. Um, you know, there, there will be a six month ramp up before I, I think, you know, we can potentially be seeing some free cash coming off the project. but. Um, that will coincide. That free cash from Santana would coincide with the likely start of construction at Sierra de Oro. So, um, you know, good timing in that regard. Uh, so, yeah, things are going very well. And uh, in parallel, because I know you're likely to ask on Santana in parallel, uh, you know, there is phase three drilling going on. Um, if I had my way, uh, I would like us to start on some of the outside pipes because they are hugely significant for how Santana can grow as an operation. That being said, you know, the drilling like phase two that we're doing around the Nicho pit area is actually more important timing wise to get a handle for our final pit optimization work. Um, so the drilling going on right now really is, is just, um, much more detailed work just around the pit margins and the like. Uh, in terms of information flow from that drilling, it's it's not overly consequential. I'm sure we'll have some news out in the coming months on it. But but the, the drilling results, I've always said, and I'm really eager to look for, are when we, had, we put our first holes into Zada and Gold Ridge uh, and some of the other pipes because Nicho is very much a known quantity right now. The drilling we're doing isn't as much to educate you or Oswaldo or, or anyone else out there. It is absolutely to educate and help Darren and the team with their internal, you know, uh, optimization work. Yeah, fantastic. Drilling back quickly on the on the delays, COVID delays. There's no other delays. Just to clarify, it's just really purely COVID. There's no other issues or anything. So no. far on track for the yeah, original just timeline. COVID. Yeah, I mean, you know, what it what COVID did was push certain work into the Mexican rainy season. Now, just like you can mine during the rainy season in Mexico, you can build mines. You know, if you had a particularly heavy rainy season, putting down, you know, your heat bleach pad and liner and everything else, you know, we were actually hoping to have that work done, you know, more like before the start of the rainy season and that few months delay earlier that's 
year meant that it's it's kind of right into the middle of it. That said, right now um, the weather is is a pretty standard uh, rainy season there. It's not. Um, which is ironic because this is 2020. So if anything was not standard, it would be the rainy season. But yeah, I think so last year we had a hundred year right rain. Now. I think last year we had a hundred year rain event or something in Mexico. I'm sure this year will be the 200 year event or something. So I'm sure something will come up there. Yeah. But no, I mean, that, that would be the only other thing. But we're into September now and the rainy season hasn't been bad. So touch wood, that will continue. Fantastic. Um, while we're on to Santana, let's briefly talk about expansion plans. You've already sort of hinted at it in other conversations as well. I like I want to get more color on that. Uh, expansion plans, what do you base them on? Is it just gold price developments or do you really see the potential? You mentioned Zada and other other pipes obviously coming into play here. But uh, give us an update what, what's going on there internally. What are you thinking? Um, gold price related perhaps or just in general, like in terms of yeah. expansion? I mean, we, we always run our models at lower gold prices obviously we're not, we're not trying to sandbag the market and uh you know in reality we'll start using higher gold prices probably closer to fifteen hundred dollars uh it's going to have a bearing on our cutoff grade um which will which will i mean we're right now modeling 0.15 grams per ton as our cutoff grade in reality i think it's probably going to be closer to 0.1 um you know we'll we'll be capturing more ounces um and, you know, Santana, if we never found an ounce in it, any one of those other pipes, uh, Santana can still grow organically from the initial production rate at Nicho. Um, but we know those other gold, those other uh, breccia pipes are gold bearing from the surface work that we've done it. And we just need to confirm the not only the the that grade translates to depth, but also the volumetrics of those other pipes. So um, we're not sitting here crossing our fingers that we've got a series of some gold bearing and some barren pipes. You know those targets that are in our in our phase three program, we know to be gold bearing. So um, that's what I'm excited about, because those are genuine discoveries in this producer. You know, we can still provide our shareholders with genuine discovery story as well. Um, and, and that, as I say, I keep getting back to those pipes because they're the ones that really intrigue me. They will dictate whether Santana can grow to being a kind of, you know, 45, 50,000 ounce a year operation for a number of years or can it scale up the way past projects that the company have developed like El Castillo at Castle Gold that started at a modest 25,000 ounces a year and grew to 100,000 ounces a year. That will be very dictated by those other pipes. And we're, we're really encouraged by, by what we think you know, we have at Santana. No, exactly. I remember being on site last October and Fernando was super thrilled about Zara, for example, which was really close to the, the office actually on site. So uh, I can't wait to see that. Um, that's it on Santana, I think. I just had a good thought, but it just flew it flew out of my mind. Like, I'll get back to it if I come back to it. It's like there's a good one, good follow up to Santana. But let's talk about Cerro de Oro. You mentioned that, like thinking about financing from free cash flow at Santana, coming off of Santana in uh, maybe mid year already. So give us an update on Cerro de Oro. Like you, you bought it recently, or August 4th, as you said before. You've been hinting at the potential. Oh, I got my question back. Sorry, let me switch back to Santana. Well, we haven't switched to Cerro de Oro 100% yet. You, you talked about uh, pre preparing technical reports before for Santana, uh, maybe a resource or a PEA even. Like, where do you stand on that? I haven't heard too much about it lately, so I just want to follow up on that. Uh we, if, if phase two drilling hadn't been as successful, I think we would have you know, worked on the resource update. But now with the next phase three drilling, we don't we want to incorporate some of that drilling results, not not from a resource perspective, but from a narrative perspective of those other pipes. So, you know, we're building this thing regardless. Um, it's going into production regardless. But I do want that. I don't want to tiptoe around this with you or with the market. In many ways, the resource update that will come every year as well as we expand the resources really uh, supports our production guidance. So, you know, my, you know, once the drilling has been done, um, phase three drilling, which will, you know, last throughout the rest of this year, you know, we'll have that out early next year, I hope in Q1 of next year. And, um, and, and there will be narrative then that we can provide for that expansion potential. And I think that leads on to your other point, the PA. 
you know, again, we will have built this. So coming out with an economic study, I've seen companies that have come out with an economic study after going into production. Um, if we ever had this larger expanded multi-pipe kind of project there, it would need a, you know, what you'd likely do is have two or three discrete pits uh, servicing a central heat leach facility. I, I'd like at that point for us to put together the basics of a PEA just to, so, so we can talk about what that expanded model of Santana is from a PEA uh, perspective. Not because we need to do a PEA to raise money for it, but I think it helps us educate our shareholders. We want our shareholders to be as educated as possible when they're making their decisions. You know, do they own it? Do they sell it? Do they want to buy more? Do they just, you know, hold? So, so I think I could see it at that, at that juncture. Okay, fantastic. And apologize to our viewers for just jumping around there, but I thought that was an important one to ask as well. It so. was a good question. It was worth it. <laughs> Perfect. Appreciate that. Um, let, let's get on to, to Sarah de Oro. Um, and well, we were just like, as I said, like, this is going to be a long one today. Like we usually have a 20 minute format, but we haven't even touched Sarah de Oro or La Fortuna yet. So let, let, let's let it go on there because I'm really curious. Like Sarah de Oro, you hinted at it. Sounds like you made a production decision in your mind already. Uh, let's drill down on that and better grade, better starting resources, better strip ratio than El Castillo. That's what I took away from previous conversations you've had with others. Fill us in there. Like, what do you base that on? Like, one thing, like, I haven't seen too much coming out, like, in terms of historical data. You're working on a 43-101 report. Fill in the blanks for me there. Absolutely. So, so when we announced Ciodora, we got all the historical data, and that included you know, 26 holes from the Naranda days there, but there was also another 40, 50 hole program done by a private company in 2017, 18. So there's a tremendous amount of drill data, 70, 75 holes over, over, over the deposit. Uh, in the first press release about Sierra de Oro, we, we, we talked about the Naranda drilling, which was largely focused on the south end of the property. Um, and anyone looking at the press release would have seen all these colorful blue dots uh, in the north, which is the 2017-18, uh, we were just doing all our final verification checks. So, um, uh, but we're comfortable with all the data. So that right now, in fact, uh, our latest edition, uh, Chris uh, Sharp from uh, that we brought over from Santera Gold uh, as our new VP project development, is working on the 43101 compilation. Um, uh, we've had a QP at site already. Uh, some internal modeling has been done. We're just refining it, looking at what gold prices we're going to use. Uh, and that will inco incorporate that whole data package. Um, my guess would be around month end, uh, we might be in a position to talk about that. Uh, in the meantime, I, I hope that now that we've verified all the 2017-18 data, we'll have some news that can talk about the re remaining part of the drill uh, information. Because speaking with analysts now, they're on the right track. I spoke to one who'd done his back of the napkin envelope, and just on that Naranda data came up with, you know, three, 350,000 ounces, somewhere in that range, at about, you know, a little under half a gram. And, and obviously he's only working with a portion of the data and nothing really in that area to the north. So what I would say is his back of the napkin or, you know, calculation on what he's been given to date by the company was in our release was pretty on track with what we're thinking. Um, but we are seeing something much more, much, much larger than that when we incorporate all data. So I, I will look forward to when I don't have to tiptoe around the subject. That will hopefully be inside of a month. Okay, fantastic. That, that's really exciting as well. And let, let, let's play the game. Like Santana looks like you're ready. Oh, you're, you're excited. I like that. Uh, you're, you're done with Santana pretty much at the end of the year. It just goes into production. Um, in terms of capacity for Darren and the team, you brought on a VP project development, so you expanded that capacity. Do you see any opportunity of jumpstarting Sierra de Oro? Like even start before? Like you, you have the cap market cap now, you have the cash. Like even even debt, like I know debt is a very sensitive issue and we're going to get to that in terms of talking about La Fortuna. Like, is there an opportunity to jumpstart the operation there? Maybe start earlier or is mid, mid next year start construction as good as it gets? Uh, pretty much, which isn't bad when you think like right now we're already doing engineering work there. 
um, we're getting ready to, to, to be in a position to start making permit applications in Q4. Um, and so, you know, talking about late Q3, Q, say after the rainy season next year, starting construction, I mean, this is one of those incredible benefits of operating in a jurisdiction like Mexico, where your permitting process is less than 12 months. Um, you know, typically, you know, about 10 months. Uh, and so, you know, so that we have to go through that work. I mean, we'll we'll do some drilling. Uh, our our decision and some more met because our decision at Sierra Dorora was was just based on the oxide component from a heat bleach perspective. Uh, you know, in reality, and there's a lot of met work that was done that that supports a nice open pit heat bleach operation there. Um, El Castillo, the sulfide component didn't leach. In the case of Santana, the sulfide does leach. We're looking forward to, you know, we, we've got a get, we've got a bit of a guess as to whether we can um, we can leach the sulfide there. That would be pure gravy, and we we look forward to kind of determining that. So while the permit thing's going on, we'll be doing a lot of things to add potentially considerable value to. To the ultimate Sierra Dorada project, but you know, start to finish inside of 12, year, 12 months uh, nice. to go from picking up a project to almost starting construction. You know, very few jurisdictions in the world offer you that. Now, I was getting a bit greedy with that question, to be honest. So we've just been, you, you've just been so good to all shareholders, and you've been delivering on everything. So I was just getting a bit greedy with that question. Um, I think we covered Sierra Dorada. We're really looking forward to the end of the month where we can talk about more details in terms of resource and and all the other mechanics around it. Um, let's jump to La Fortuna because I don't want to run too too long. We're already way over time anyway. Um, but uh, La Fortuna, it's like I always have the feeling you treat La Fortuna as a as an unloved stepchild. I don't even know why I can't shake that feeling. Uh, it seems like you're constantly pushing it back. Like Cerro de Ore is now a great opportunity to, to sequence first. We, we sort of worked that out why. It's super easy, super simple. Um, w one thing I took away, though, is like you're really worried about taking on debt um, that I've read in another interview like, as well. Like, like debt has its plus, positives and negatives, right? Um, but La Fortuna is only 35 million Canadian, not, not even US CapEx, right? With... And my point is like with those very, let's call them simple heap leach operations that your team is pretty much could do in their sleep, in my opinion. Why, why pushing that back? Keep pushing that back. It's, I mean, hey, I, I, I will say I'm not afraid of debt. <laughs> I would have been afraid of debt if we were a single asset company and you're taking debt on for, for your single asset. I think that's problematic. And we're not. With Santana up and running, um, a month ago, August, we're, we're September 3rd now. August 3rd, we had two projects, Santana and Fortuna. Fast forward a month, um, and, and we now have three. What that does is give us an, you know, a, a flexibility that did not exist a month ago in terms of sequencing. Uh, Doc, I lost you. We oh, my good. Again. I lost you. Okay, the last word I heard was Hang sequencing. On. So, yeah. So, you know, we ha we have this ability now to to sequence stuff uh, that we didn't have when it was just build mine one, take dead on to build mine two. Um, and so, you know, we're we're examining those various options because I've always thought it makes sense just to build things out sequentially. In reality, once you're up and running at mine number one, you maybe there's a lot of concurrent development of projects two and three. Um, now, the capex number on Fortuna isn't much, but Sierra de Oro is a much simpler project, and one could make the argument uh, to build Santana and then to build Fortuna. And you do things in a very ordered, organized manner. The other thing to remember with Fortuna is we did that PEA in 2018. We used 1250 gold. Really, if you're if you're delaying it a little while you're building and bringing value forward by building something else in the meantime, you're not just sitting on your hands and you know taking cash for cash flow from Santana. It will be replaced with something during that time we will add value to Fortuna because we'll remodel it at higher gold prices and we'll capture more ounces there. 
And, you know, in truth, it also needs a few million dollars of exploration thrown at it at some point. You know, the last work on it was done 10 years ago from a drilling perspective, and we know there are extensions to that starter pit, let alone elsewhere on the project. So by pushing it back a little as we build Sierra Dororo first, you could arguably eliminate debt requirements for it. And secondly, you're now launching a third mine, which is maybe 50,000 ounces a year for eight, eight, nine or 10 years uh, life, as opposed to that starter life of five years. Fortuna is always going to be a high margin project in good markets and bad. We, we want those ounces to contribute as quickly as possible. But, you know, there are many, many paths and we haven't finalized exactly which route we will go. What, what, what I do know is we are going to fast track the permitting of Sierra Doro, which further gives us that flexibility of having two permitted operations. How do we then uh, advance those? Okay, fantastic. I'm not so, afraid of anything, Kai. Good man. No, I know uh, that's that's fantastic. Um, I think we're up. It's like I have one last question. Like, what what are you going to do with the higher gold price? You, you hinted at it. Like, we're trading at 1940 or something today. I haven't even looked really. Um, we're just in a good gold price environment, in my opinion. If it's 1940 or 1970, I'm happy with it. Um, but w what's that going to look like? You you hinted at it in Santana, like Fortuna. Just just wrap that in a shell for us. Are we going to see updates there? Like in general, are you going to come up with a flurry of uh, like resource increases or like just how are you using that internally as well? Yeah, I mean, I I, I was happy at fifteen hundred. <laughs> you know, this this business was built around not needing these kinds of levels, which are seeing even some of the poorest operators out there actually make money now. You know, in reality, one of the reasons we, we have models like Fortuna done at 1250 is because if we are lucky to have the kind of gold market we're in right now, you know, then our shareholders will feel that love. It's, you know, um, and so Fourteen, fifteen hundred dollar gold is a very healthy gold price for us and for a lot of operators out there. Nineteen probably makes everyone look like geniuses. Um, the difference, I think, ultimately will be of those producers. And wh where I want to set Monero up is we are a leading company from a point of view of a strong bottom line and profitability, you know, which which is based around building operations that will will make money at much lower gold prices and make a ton of money if we're fortunate to, to have the cycle in our favor, which which it appears to be. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. I think that's those were great words to end this interview on. Skeptic, we didn't get to your question, but I think we answered it during the Santana part talking about the expansion. So um, apologize for that, but that was a good question that's posted here on Twitter for everybody to read and follow up on. Um, one thing I completely forgot to mention at the beginning, and I'm all about transparency. I own options in Monero Alamos. I own a lot of shares in Monero Alamos. So whatever I say, my enthusiasm, take everything with a bit of grain of salt. And uh, since I've been asked during a, a direct message here on, on uh, Twitter, we don't charge for these interviews. These are free interviews and uh, we like the companies that we're talking to. So that's, uh, we do the pre-selection. We, we try to find some good ones and uh, it's always great to have companies come back after six months, give us an update as well. Uh, Doc, really appreciate you joining us. Thanks for taking the time. It was very comprehensive. Uh, I think our listeners got something out of it as well. So I really appreciate that. And uh, we'll make this available on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram. So everybody follow us there. Thanks for the questions and uh, stay tuned for another one next week. Thanks so much, Doug. Thanks, Kai.